praise, all the honor to your name. Lord, we thank you because this morning you are seated in your throne. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, do as it please you this morning. And we vow to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Lord, everything done here so far has been edifying. Lord, we pray that, Lord, you will take care of the rest in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, let your word come forth with simplicity and with clarity. And I pray, O oh God, that your people will live here transformed, renewed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And let the people of God say a big amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning we have a lot of things to do with little time to do it, but we will trust God because God is a merciful God. I want to continue with a subject that I was dealing with last week. I just want to do part two and I'm done. I'll leave it alone. But moving forward, we want to deal with Christian foundation. I am with this thing on a long, for a long haul. <laughs> On Wednesdays, I'll be on it. I've been on it so far for about two or three weeks. And we will continue to be on it both in Bible studies and through the pulpit because I believe that foundations are everything. If you don't have a foundation, you don't have a solid ground. But this morning, I just want to move in the same direction that uh, we were moving in from last week and... There are so many dimensions to our God, the God that we serve. And the, the more you think you know God, the more you realize that you don't know him. And the more you think you know the word, the more God reveals himself to you, the more you find out. And it's a very humbling experience because every time you, you open up the scriptures and then you find out, wow. Just when I thought I had it all together, then you find out, oh, no, 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 not so fast. Because there are depths of revelations that we can never know. And that's the beauty of the word of God. So never rush over a word because you never know what God, what revelation God can pull out of it for you. And never jump to conclusions whenever you hear the word of God being preached. Never say, oh, I've heard it before. No, because God has a way of, you know, putting, putting a spin on a word for you and it has the capacity the ability to change your life and so this morning if you give me 25 to 30 minutes i just want to speak to you part two of the god that restores there are so many dimensions and attributes of god that we can talk about we can talk about the mercies of god we can talk about the power of god the omniscience of god the omnipresence of god we can talk about a whole bunch of stuff the justice of god but this morning and as we started last week we want to continue on the, that aspect of god that gives us hope and, and and there are so many of us here the bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick so we need hope I need hope, and you need hope. But I want you to know that it's not all lost. You haven't lost anything. Because God, he has the ability to restore that which you think is lost. And last week, we said that the reason why God is able to restore is that God does not... We will go just a touch deeper from last week, just a touch deeper... God does not dwell in time. He, if, if this lectern here is time, God does not dwell here. God stands outside of time. And he looks at time. And so the question then becomes, where does God dwell? God dwells in eternity God dwells in eternity and please it's important that you understand this because that will change how you 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 relate to God that will change how you see God God does not dwell in time he dwells outside of time and he visits time he visits time. 
And that is why I believe in the Kairos. You know, there is what we call the Kronos time. The Kronos time is that sequential time of the watch that you have. That's the Kronos. The, the things that happens. But there is what we call the Kairos time. The Kairos time is the setup time of God. So God can set, because don't forget, he does not uh, uh, dwell in time. So he knows how to regulate time and God can set you up. And so as a believer, when you get up in the morning and you go to prayer on the prayer line or you are praying on your own, whatever you're doing, one of the prayers you should never forget to pray is that God, and that's an important prayer, God help me to be at the right place at the right time. Hallelujah. I know this friend of mine, years ago, he was in 42nd Street doing some things there, and uh, he left there and came back home. And when he came back home, right where he was standing, right where he was, he turned on the television and there was a serious shooting that many people died right after he left. And, and, and God has a way of setting you up. He turned on the television and said, wow, I was at this place just a few moments ago. He could have been there. So when you get up in the morning, one of the prayers you need to pray is that God let me be at the right place place at the right time doing the right thing with the right people glory be to god somebody say amen so god does not dwell in time god visits time so when god says that he's able to restore that which the locust according to joel chapter 2 and the canker worm and the palmer worm has stolen as we discovered last week, he's saying that because I dwell in eternity and I am not confined and limited by time, I can visit every aspect of time. I can visit the past. I can be with you in the present. And together we will go into the future. Now, when you understand that and you understand Isaiah 46 verse 10, you are far from depression and anxiety. Why? Because the Bible says that I am the Lord that declares the end from the beginning. Now, many of you, you don't understand because you don't know what's going to happen. And we are human. We are limited in our knowledge unless God reveals things to us. But we don't know how it's going to end. We only know the beginning. But God says that he, before he starts something, he already knows how it's going to end. And so when you are in that place, you are not fretting, you are not anxious, you are not, you know, anxiety, you are not living a life of anxiety. Why? Because you know that your life is in the hands of God. Isaiah 46.10 says, declaring the end from the beginning. That is the kind of God that you serve. He declares before, before he starts something, he already knows. That is why the most dangerous place you and I can ever be is outside of the will of God. Because God has a path for everybody. And so long as you stay on that path and obey the word of God, it doesn't matter how bumpy that road is. It doesn't matter the potholes and everything in that road. If you stay committed to that road, God knows how to bring you to that expected end. And it's because he knows how it is going to end before he starts. So God does not dwell in time. And please, it's important that you understand that aspect of God. Because once you understand that, when God tells you that he's able to do something, you will not doubt him. You will not doubt him at all. Because he's able to go into the past. Now, last week, as I told you, there are many of you, you are confused, perplexed, and anxious because you are in the present and you are dealing with things of the past and worrying about the future. And so, you know, that's confusion. But when I understand that in the present, I'm in the present, he's with me. 
Isaiah 43 says that when you walk through the fire, when you walk through the water, now, <laughs> you don't walk through fire. When you are walking through fire, when you are, when, when walking is the slowest pace one can ever go. And you don't walk at a slow pace when there is an impending danger. So when there is fire, you have the tendency to run or walk fast or move at a faster pace. But the Bible said that when you walk, that means that in the midst of the fire, you also understand that there is a hand. And so you are, that's what the psalmist said. Yet though I walk through the valley now, when I see death coming, I got to run. But the Bible says that yet though I walk through the valley. What? Why is he walking and not running? I got to run when I see death coming. But he understands something that you and I don't. He said, yet though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because I'm able to deal with death now. Because I'm able to fight death now. Because of the presence. Because of the presence of God. The presence of God is with me. And so this morning, for the next 20, 20 minutes, I want to talk to you about the God that restores. And I want you to please go to Psalm 90, verse 2. Psalm 90, verse 2. The God that restores. Like I said, we're going just a touch deeper, just a touch deeper from last week. Psalm 90 verse, 12, verse 2 says, Before the mountains were brought forth. Before the mountains were brought forth. Or ever thou hast formed the earth and the, word, the word world, even from everlasting to everlasting thou art God now uh, this verse ought to do something to you because the Bible said that from everlasting to everlasting he is God now now I understand because he is from everlasting to everlasting in John chapter 5 verse 24 he says that he is the one that can give you everlasting life and because he is the everlasting to everlasting, he's the only one that can give you everlasting life. Because before the mountains were formed, he was God. And he understands things that you and I do not understand. Seasons and times were created for you and I. So God moves in phases, P-H-A-S-E-S. Life is phasal. So we deal with certain things. God, you know, uh, gives us closure by giving us seasons and times and months. That is why we start a new year so that we can, you know, forget about the past and press on. Because God gives us life in phases, in doses. There are many of you, if God dumps everything on you right now, you know, one thing Moses didn't know. If Moses probably knew what he was going to encounter, and what he was going to go through leading the people out of Egypt, he probably would have said no. But God, uh, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So God gives us bits and pieces. Prophetic word sometimes comes in pieces so that you understand. Sometimes you want to understand everything, but God says, no, I will not reveal everything to you, but I'll give it to you in pieces. Walk with me, and I will show you. Before the mountains were brought forth, or even thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Time was created for you and I. And please understand that God is above time. He's not in time. That should change the way you see God. Like I said last week, many of us, we think God is our classmate. No. He's up there and we are here. He's giving us the power though. But please understand that he is God from everlasting. Who is God? He's the one who is worthy to be praised. That is why we are here. He's the one that is worthy to be worshipped. When you came here, you did not come to worship a man. You came to worship God. 
And so he is God from everlasting to everlasting. The one we bow before. The one we lift up our hands to. The one that we sing to. The one that we glorify. God does not dwell in time. He's above time. And God visits time. So God dwells in eternity. Now, in 2 Kings chapter 20 verse 8, please understand that because he does not dwell in time, he has the ability to regulate time. Now, many of us, when we pass, like I said last week, when, when you were maybe 10 years old, you were planning your life, and you said to yourself, by the time I am this old, I should have accomplished this, that, that, and the other thing. But most of you, and I think that is the reality of life, God has been good. You've accomplished some things. But you can also realize that there are many things that you have not accomplished. And so you have the tendency to think that God has disappointed you. God has failed you. I come into contact with so many people that think that God has forsaken them and disappointed them. But please understand that God can change your destiny in a flash. He has the ability to turn your life around in 24 hours. I told you last week, a lifetime of labor can never be compared, not a full day of labor, uh, favor, but half a day of favor. So favor, a half day of favor is way better than a lifetime of labor because my Bible tells me that within a twinkle of an eye, Joseph was changed. Glory be to God. Joseph was changed. He was moved from the prison. He was transported. He was shaven and clean and brought before the king. I prophesy, Amos chapter 3 verse 7, the Bible says God will not do anything unless he reveals it to his servant. I prophesy that God will change your destiny. I pray that God will clean you up so that you can walk in the corridors of power, so that you can rub shoulders with, 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 with those in high places. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, some of you are not saying amen because your, your tiny weeny mind can't figure it out. How, how is it going to be? Uh, my, Mark chapter 10 verse 27. With man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. I have made that decision a long time ago that I will never stress one day. I will never be anxious one day. You know why? Because I know that my life is in his hands. He regulates time and he knows how to turn things around. And so in 2 Kings chapter 20, Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, Isaiah told Hezekiah that he will be healed. So he said, what is the proof that I will be healed? What is the proof? Many of us, we live in a generation where we seek signs. But Jesus said, I will not give you any other sign except the sign of Jonah. Hallelujah. He was in the belly, the, 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 the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. And you are getting no other sign. Hezekiah said, Isaiah said, what shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me? Many of you, you are here seated today and you are saying, how on God's earth will I come out of this situation? Oh yeah. If you don't, I do ask sometimes. Because sometimes my tiny weeny mind will play games. Then I will remind that mind of myself. I say, listen, the Bible says that my mind should be renewed and be transformed. And so you cannot be processing all those things. Because my God has already taken care of everything. He said, and I, Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me? And that I should go up into the house of the Lord the third day. Verse 9. Verse 9. Please work with me. Verse 9. Verse 9. Don't slow us down, people. Okay, let me open my Bible then. You got to move. You got to move. Okay. And Isaiah said, This sign shall thou have 
of the Lord. That the Lord would do the thing that he has spoken. Uh -huh. Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees? In other words, other versions say, shall the shadow, just a little, a touch deeper. Shall the shadow go forward 10 steps? It's a normal thing for the shadow to go forward. I want to dwell here for a moment because many of us, we limit God, not because God is not powerful, but we limit him with unbelief. Sometimes we tie the hands of God with unbelief. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, he says that if footmen have wearied you, can you run with horses? Now let me ask you a question. If footmen have wearied you, you haven't even attempted anything yet. You haven't even started and you are getting wearied. If footmen have wearied you, can you run with horses? Now you need to pass the test to get to the next rank. If you want to get to the next rank, you need to defeat the footman. And you must also defeat the horses for you to get to where God wants you to go. Now listen, he said, it is easy thing for the shadow to move forward. If the shadow is moving forward, it's a normal thing. It's a normal thing. That is what I like about God. Because the Bible says that he has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Now, listen, if somebody has the capacity, uh, the, the, the potential, the ability to do something and they do it, is it, is it, is it, is it a, a big deal? No. You know, as for this one, they, 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 they have the capacity, they have the ability, they have the power, they have the skills to do it. So they do it, no big deal. But when God, when God, you see, God's hands is on the ground. He's picking dirty things to clean it up, to use it. But you are too high so he can't reach you. He said, Zacchaeus, come down because where you are, I can't reach you. Now, when God picks something that is rejected, something that is despised, something that nobody has regard for, and he uses it, everybody will look at it and say, aha, as for this one, it must be the, not the hand. The hand is too powerful. This is the finger of God. You don't need the hand of God. Because when the hand of God moves, I don't know if you'll be able to stand. But this is the finger of God. So he said, can God move? It's an easy thing for God to move the shadow forward. 10 degrees or 10 steps. Let's go to verse 10. You see, when there are certain things that when God does or when people see in your life, it's not a big deal because they know you can do it. But there are certain things that when it manifests in your life, they must say, ha, ah, as for this thing, as for this one, it is the hand of God. And Hezekiah answered, it is lighting for the shadow to go down 10 degrees. And but let the shadow return backward. Did you see? He said moving forward is okay. Now we can understand. You move with your shadow. Now you got to be careful with shadow. Somebody told me that even your shadow sometimes can abandon you. They can play tricks on you. You think your shadow is with you? Turn the light off and see if the shadow will be there. Run for your life. But he said, it's easy for you to move it 10 steps forward. But can he do it? Now, you just don't say it, but you think it. Because there are certain things that in your tiny, weeny mind, you think. As for this one, I am not so sure. But I have come to the understanding that if God had said that Jonah swallowed the whale, instead of the whale swallowing Jonah, I would have believed. Because with God... All things are possible. So he said, can the shadow, maybe today you are here, you are saying, can the shadow 
move back. It's a normal thing for the shadow to go forward. But can the shadow move back? Lord, as for this one, I don't know how. Lord, I want to believe. You are like that guy. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. You want to believe. I like that guy. His honesty. He said, Lord, I want to believe, but help thou my unbelief. Because your tiny weeny mind can't process it. He said, the shadow can go forward. And as it can go forward, the shadow can go back. Why? Because he is God that visits time. And look into time. Outside of time. And regulates time. And fast forward time. That is what. Now listen, listen, listen. The Bible says, God is not going to restore things to you. When we are talking about restoration, people are thinking, what people, the TV that broke down, God is going to give me another TV. Start th thinking higher. Stop thinking that. God is going to give me another car. Come to a higher thinking. He said, what the locust and the cankerworm has eaten, God will restore those years. My God restores years, not things. That is the kind of God. So when we are quoting this verse, like, oh, oh God, the car that broke down, God is going to give it back to me. Oh, my, my house that got burned down, God is going to do that. This TV, this, that, this, that. Listen, it's all good. But God is not into those things because he's going to restore to you the years. And if you have the years, and if you have the strength, and if you have the wisdom of God, and if you have the anointing of God upon your life, you shall get it back. Somebody say, I'll take it back. Now, now, when they were singing this morning, they were prophetic because they said what the enemy stole from me. You remember, I was really enjoying it. I wish they had never stopped because he said what the enemy stole from me, I go and I take it back. Matiki Mahasahaya. Someone said, take it back, take it back, take it back. Now you got to act. You got to act violent. The Bible said that the violent shall take it by force. Somebody said, take it back. When I say one, two, three, you, with action, one, two, three, say, take it back. Okay, let's go. One, two, three. Now be careful because some people's hands are moving very violently. Be careful somebody doesn't hit your jaw. One, two, three. Pakiha. One, two, three. Take it back. We are not taking it back in our own selves, but we know somebody who can go and do it for us. And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees, but let the shadow return backwards 10 degrees. Let's look at the next verse, verse 11. Verse 11. It says, and Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow. Hey, 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 he brought the shadow 10 degrees backward. This reminds me of the story of Gideon. He said, God, if you are with me, let this cotton be dry. And if you are with me, let that cotton be wet. And God said, this is a small thing for me. He said, God, if you are with us, why are all these trouble? And so if you are able to let this thing be wet, and if you are able to let this thing be dry, I will know that you are with me. But the God that you serve, he's a God that exceeds your expectation. Maybe you are waiting and waiting and waiting. And you have not seen anything yet. But I came here today to prophesy into your life. The Bible says that by the prophet, the nation of Israel was saved. I prophesy that God Almighty will restore unto you in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord. And he brought the shadow, I like this, 10 degrees backward, which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. So, for the purposes of this teaching today, let's use this verse for the fact that God can visit your past. There is also another verse. Now, in your present, 
God can hold time for you. God can break protocols for you. Because the Bible says in Joshua chapter 10, so this verse, God visits the past. He turns the shadow back. I'm able to move it. I have a heavenly dial. In Joshua chapter 10, the Bible said, Joshua spoke and said, there will not, now listen, Joshua chapter 10. He said, then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said, he said in the sight of Israel, son, son, you have the capacity to speak to the elements because the enemy uses the elements to fight you. Now, one of the most important prayers you can also pray when you get up is that God, don't let any powers of darkness that the enemy uses with the sun, the moon, and even the earth to fight against me materialize. And when you get up, you must say, Lord, today, let the sun, the moon, and the earth cooperate with me because the enemy uses the elements. You know how he uses it? He uses the elements to fight you. The Bible said that Jesus wanted to go to the other side with the disciples. But the Bible said that there was a boisterous wind. And then Jesus spoke. So you got to speak. Jesus said, peace be still. You got to speak. The Bible said, now when you speak, God is going to back it. The Bible said that Joshua spoke and said, you son, be still over Gibeon until I finish my assignment. Now, they are planning to fire you in your workplace. You, you, you must stand in front of that workplace and say, I speak to this place. In the name of Jesus, unless you change your mind, this thing is coming down. You change your mind. I have done you no wrong. You got to use the authority of God's word in your mouth. Gideon said, the sun will stand still. God has the capacity he said, the time will not go forward for you. The time will stand still until you have fulfilled your assignment. So you have not lost anything. Oh, my biological clock is ticking. I ought to have children by now. I need to do this. I need to do this. That is the thinking of man. God doesn't have no biological clock. Go and ask Sarah. God have no clock. Because he said, the angel said, a year by this time, when I come here, the Bible said that Sarah laughed. Because he, she did not believe what the angel said. But the angel said, Sarah, you are laughing. He said, oh no, I didn't laugh. Some of you, you are laughing, but the laughter is a laughter of sarcasm and laughter of doubt and unbelief. It's not a laughter of believing. So Sarah said, Sarah laughed. He said, you laughed. Oh, no, no, I did not laugh. But you laughed because you did not believe what God said. You did not believe. But Joshua spoke how I wish somebody would speak. The enemy is doing some things. If only you can speak. If only you can speak and say, Son, be still over Gibeon. You will not move until I am done with my assignment. And when Gideon spoke, God backed his word. God backed his word. So God has the ability to restore time, cause time to stand still, and cause time to move forward for you. Behold, I am the Lord of all flesh. And is there anything too hard for me. God specializes in the impossibilities. When you think you can do it by yourself, that is when God will kick in. And he will do it. And he will take all the glory for yourself. Himself. Amen. Now, in Joel chapter 2, the Bible says, I already told you, God does not restore things. He restores years. He restores years. That is why there are certain people Every time you see them, it's like they are not growing old. They are growing young. Yeah. Because God is doing some things. 
you see them instead of them growing old, they are growing young because God is working for them. Most of you here, you are blessed because all that you go to the hospital for is for checkups. It's for checkups. They have not diagnosed, diagnosed you of anything serious, nothing, by the grace of God. You only go and you check up and then you come home and then you continue life. That's a blessing. Hallelujah. Because God is working for you. He said, be glad. Joel chapter 2 verse 23. People of Zion, rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the autumn rains. Now give me the, and that's the NIV, that's okay. The autumn rains because he is faithful. He sends you abundant showers both in autumn and spring. That's double blessing. That is why I tell you, you haven't lost anything. He said, I'll bring you the rain in both seasons. If you miss it here, you will get it here. Because I know how to command the elements to work in your favor. Be glad. One of the things lacking in the body of Christ these days is joy. I'm not talking about happiness. I'm talking about joy. What is joy? Joy is that which is born from the spirit. Not based on things that are happening to you. Because if it's based on things happening to you, you, you see you one day up, the next day down. Now, we are not denying things that happen to us. Not everything that happens to us is good. And we understand that. But the thing is, we don't respond to those things. We don't. We respond to the spiritual things. So he said, be glad. People of Zion, rejoice. Now, watch this. There's a revelation here. He says, rejoice in the Lord. So the only constant joy and rejoicing is when it is in. Rejoice. And again, I say, Philippians 4.4. 4. How does this rejoicing take place? Because... I must learn how to respond to the things that are happening with my spirit rather than with my mind. Because your mind will always tell you that which is impossible. I was listening to a man of God one time. He said, somebody came to him and said, oh, pastor, my father died. My father died. My mother died. And the pastor said, good. And the man left confused. The father has died. But it's not time to keep on adding negative things to it. So he has said it's good. He's not suffering right now. He's in heaven now. Now let's focus on how we can continue. Let's focus and believe that she was a good Christian. She served God faithfully. And so she's somewhere. You have to make up your mind that you would also go there. This is not the time to be, oh boy, your mother died. Oh boy, poor you. No, 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 you don't do that. Our eyes don't respond to those things. We respond to things with our spirit. That is why when the enemy, Paul said, though they slay me, yet we do not die. They kill you, but you do not die. They persecute you, but you press on. Why? Because you do not respond to what you see, but you respond with your spirit. Hallelujah. And if we can make that transition from responding to the stimuli around with our eyes rather than with our spirit, Depression will be far from us. Anxiety far from us. Bitterness and anger far from us because we are not responding to it with our mind. But we are responding to these things with our heart. Somebody say amen. amen. Well, some people will call it denial. They can call it whatever they want. But our hope is in the Lord. Be glad. People of Zion, rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the autumn rains. Because he is faithful. He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains, as before. Verse 24. Verse 24. He has given you the abundant rains. I think I'll start opening up my Bible. I don't like being slowed down at all. The threshing floor will be filled with grain. 
The vats will overflow with new wine and oil. Number 25. I will rip. Now listen. He says, I will restore. But look at what the NIV does. He said, I will repay. I will repay you for the years that the locusts have eaten. And the great army and the young locusts, the other locusts and the locust swarm, my great army that I sent among you. God said he will repay. As for you, he will repay you with good dividends. But as for your enemy, God will repay. You see, the salary of the wicked that God is going to give to them, it, it will shock them. Huh? He said, though a thousand fall on my left, ten thousand on my right hand side, but it shall not come near me, but my eyes only shall I watch and see the reward. That is pay. The salary of the wicked. Don't fight your battle. Some of you, you pray that your enemies die. They should not die. Me, I don't want none of my enemies to die. Do you know why? Because I want God to prepare a table. Don't pray for your enemies to die. Oh, die. No, 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 don't die. Live long. Because every single thing you will see every day will provoke you. Because you want to destroy the table, but God will build a table. God will set a table. You want to stop me, but God will push me forward. You want to depress me, but God will give me joy. Don't pray for them to die. No. They have to live and see the goodness of God in your life. Somebody shout a big amen. He said, and I will repay you. God, you haven't lost anything. You have not lost anything. What is restoration? Restoration means to take something from where it used to be and put it back there. So God is going to take the lost glory and put it back where it belongs. God is going to take back the health that challenges you are facing and put it back where it belongs. The enemy stole some finances. God is going to take it back and put it where it belongs. Now some of you, let me tell you, the reason why you don't see your harvest now, I don't know where this came from, but you need to hear this. The reason why you don't see your harvest, you are sowing, but you don't see your harvest. One of the reasons why is that after you have sown, you don't rejoice. I'm speaking prophetically. I don't know who I'm speaking to. Okay, I'm speaking to myself too. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, the reason why, you do not see the harvest. Trust me, there are faithful people in this ministry. Faithful people. I remember when COVID hit, finances was tough. But let me tell you, there were people who, even when the church was closed, they stopped by every single day and put their offerings, their tithe, their giving, their vows and everything, every single day, even though the church was closed. That is the kind of people that are in this place. But listen, I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, the reason why your harvest, Makahaya, is not maximized is because you do not celebrate after you have sown. No farmer puts a seed in the ground and goes around crying. I hope, I don't know where this came from. He said the reason why you don't see the maximization of your harvest is because you do not celebrate after you have put it in the ground. Let me tell you what the farmer does. When he put the seed in the ground, he's living a life of expectancy every day. Gets up every morning and see if the thing has sprout. See if the thing is working. And thanking God and believing God. I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus. That after you have sown the seed. God is not trying to take anything from you. He's trying to get something to you. Glory be to God. Somebody say God is not trying to take anything from me. He's trying to get something to me. Yeah. And the next thing. 
I heard the spirit of the Lord say, I don't know what God is doing. He said, the reason why you don't see the maximization of your harvest is because, number two, you do it gradually. You do it gradually. But do it with joy. Thanksgiving. Believe in God. And thirdly, some of you, after you have sown, you cross your hands and don't do nothing. Don't do nothing. But I pray in the name of Jesus, after you have sown and rejoiced and be glad, you will take the necessary steps. Hallelujah. For God to bless you. In Jesus. Must somebody say amen. amen. And I will repay you for the years that the locusts have eaten. The great locust and the young locust. The other locust and the locust swarm. My great army that I sent among you. God says be glad. Rejoice. Because I'm able to go into the past. Be with you in the present and in the future. What was going to happen in the future? And I end. Because in the verse of 28, we found out that God can go in the past. 2 Kings 20, Joshua chapter 10, verse 12. He can also go into the future. How is he going to do it? He said, after my people have repented and they have come to me with contrition, with a contrite spirit, repented from their sins. Joel 2, 28, restoration. He said, now, I'll, I'll hold your hand and carry you into the future. And now, instead of you living in doubt, unbelief, condemnation, sin, or repentant heart, now, I'm going to bring you to the other side and I will pour out my I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit upon you. Your children will see things. Old people will see things. Visions, prophesying. Hallelujah. That is what I call restoration. In other words, you were precious in my sight. But you missed the mark. But I'm going to hold your hand and bring you back to that place again. How I pray God will bring somebody back to that place again. That place of prayer. That place of reading the word. That place of service. That place of repentance. That place of joy. How I pray God will bring somebody back. How I pray God will bring somebody back. You know that the joy of the Lord is no longer there. You know it. I don't have to tell you. You know that there is no zeal for the word of God. You know it. You know there is no desire for prayer. You know it. You know there is no desire for service. All you do is talking. But I pray that God will move you from talking to action. Jesus' mighty name. I pray that what the locusts have destroyed, they have eaten, God restore in the mighty name of Jesus. For he's able to turn the shadow back 10 degrees. And he's able to move it forward 10 degrees. And he's able to do that which man, your, man can, your mind cannot comprehend. Because with God, all things are possible. He visits us in different times. But I can guarantee you that he will surely visit you. Psalm 126, the Bible says that when the Lord turned around the captivity of Zion, it was like a dream. Some of you, the things that God is going to do for you, you will pinch yourself and say, oh, am I dreaming or it is real? This is real, brother. This is real. He, he's going to turn things around for you so that you will know that there is a God in Jerusalem. I pray that the person that has given up, the person that is confused and depressed and dejected, whatever the situation is, I pray that God Almighty will cause you to know that with him all things are possible. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Some of you don't come on the prayer line. Some of the testimonies I hear is it's just unbelievable. Come there, pray and see, hear things. Hear things. Because God is a prayer answering God. He might not answer it when you want him to. But he will surely. 
Father, bless your word. Bless your people. Lord, anoint them, O God, and give them good speed. Lord, I pray that they will be able to discern the difference between delay and God doing his thing with their lives. I pray that the enemy will not cause them to move hurriedly outside of the will of God. But they will have the discerning spirit to know where there is a delay. But then they will also have the discernment to know that God is stirring up a miracle for them. Give them insight. Give them spiritual understanding. Open their eyes that they may see. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. And let the people of God say amen. amen. We're going to the Lord's table. We have a lot of things to do this morning. The Bible says that the blood of Jesus speaketh better things than that of Abel. And this morning as we go to the Lord's table, you are praying that God, you told us, your word told us that we must do this in remembrance of you. Remembering what? What he did. What he's coming to do. People, soon and very soon, Jesus is coming back. Everything proves that. So you got to be careful. The Bible said, knowing that all these things will happen, what manner of people ought we to be? You must know that things are happening, and these things that are happening, God Almighty is telling us something. Father, I pray, as we celebrate and we go to your table this morning, let your blood, the body, minister healing to somebody. Whenever we do this prophetically, we are declaring that you are coming back. You are the soon coming king. And historically, we are reminding ourselves, oh God, what you did on the cross. We are still reminded that your blood speaketh better things than that of Abel. As your people come to the table today, let sicknesses, diseases flee. My God, I pray, let deliverance flow this morning. Let them testify because, Lord, we have had an encounter with you. We bless you for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And let the people of God say amen. 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 Oh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never
verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Let's partake of the bread together as commanded by Jesus Christ before he departed. The Bible says that he took the bread and broke it. And he said, take it. This is my body. What do you need? I think somebody needs some over there. Somebody need want to be move in unison. Anybody need something? What's going on? Want to move in unison? Are we okay over there, everybody? All right. And the Bible said the same way he took the cup and said, Drink. This is the New Testament in my blood. Let's stick together. The Bible says that in Psalm Matthew 26, when they did that, they gave thanks and they worshiped the Lord. Hallelujah. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great fear is he has done unto the Lord, to the Lord be the glory. Great Unto the Lord, unto be the glory. Great thing he has done. Unto the Lord. this up and, and, and let somebody help you move it out of the way. Thank you. At this time we're going to take our time and our offerings. The Bible says bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. Prove me now here which says the Lord of hosts and see if I will not open the windows of heaven upon your life. Now, when we're talking about God rewarding us, he can reward us in so many ways. So many ways. It can be financial. It can be healing. But I think the other day, Sister Debbie said that God gave her a $5 raise. That doesn't usually happen. Sometimes they'll give you 20 cents. They'll give you this, that, and that, 25. But I don't, I don't want to sit at Debbie Isha. She don't like to talk a lot. But she already testified on the prayer line. So she said, but let me tell you, let me tell you what happened. She was speaking to me. Can I share something? All right. So she was talking to me about something. And, you know, sometimes God causes you to say something and you say, oh boy, what did I do? What does that got to do with anything? We talked about the issue and I said, go and sow a seed. And right away, 
she did it on the uh, on the what cash app that's the beauty of cash app she did it right away she did it so i said but what's that got to do with sowing seed and then i said oh god i understand she comes back and said god did that now listen to me people god can bless you in so many ways but he has the capacity to bless you financially also he can he can they don't usually give you that kind of raise but she did get that but i pray somebody here will receive more in jesus name now the beauty of the cash up is that people are sowing their seeds and everything on friday third i said wow it's beautiful that with joy hallelujah lwom 30r please do it let god bless you please let's come back from the back father as your people are coming they are not coming to give to a person they are giving to you for your word says that when we give they will give back unto us measure press down shaking together running over will men give unto our bosom lord i pray that as they come oh god that you cause them to ask no that tithe is not a debt they owe but it's a seed that they sow we thank you and we bless you for in jesus mighty name we pray let the people of god say amen Please, let's come back from the back. Hallelujah. We have a lot of things to do. Unto the Lord be the 